In this video, I'm going to go over how to install WordPress locally on a Mac using MAMP. So the first thing we're going to do is Google MAMP. And this first link that comes up, MAMP and MAMP Pro, that's the one you want. So click on that. Then click on free download here. I'm going to click on this link on the left hand side here because I have an Intel Mac. If you have an M1 chip Mac, you're going to want the link on the right hand side here. So MAMP is basically like WAMP server or ZAMP or AMPS. If you've ever used one of those programs where what it does is it runs a local Apache web server along with MySQL and PHP. And so then we can develop and test websites locally. So what we can do is we can actually put our website files like our PHP scripts and our HTML and CSS files. We can put them in a special folder called htdocs. And htdocs is basically the equivalent of a public HTML folder in a typical sort of shared hosting setup that you might have seen, that you've seen on CS Unix, for example. So what we'll do is after we're done installing it, we'll actually install WordPress by putting it into that special htdocs folder. And then you can actually access the files using the locally running Apache web server by navigating to localhost in the web browser. And at that point, you know, any PHP scripts you've got in that htdocs folder, they're going to run when you access them that way, because you're basically accessing them through a web server and Apache is going to run PHP and we'll get the usual sort of result that we'd see on shared hosting or on CS Unix type environments. So we'll let this finish downloading here and then we'll run through the installer here. So there we go. We'll click on this and we'll run through the installer. There's nothing special we have to do, just the usual sort of stuff, continue agree, no special configurations when we're installing it. And this will take a minute or two to actually run through the installer here. All right, so when this is done, we can close it. We'll move the installer to the trash. And then you can go to applications and you'll see MAMP and MAMP Pro. You can double click on MAMP. And then you wanna run the MAMP program. So just click on MAMP here. So then this will load up here. And what we're first gonna do is go to preferences. So go to preferences and then go to ports. And then where it says Apache port, let's change that to 80 and we'll say, okay. And then you can go to start here. And then eventually it's gonna pop up with some sort of a, a welcome page here for us in the browser. So we'll give that a second to, to pop up as it starts up the Apache web server and, and MySQL and that. One of the things we're also gonna get with MAMP here is PHP MyAdmin, which is pretty much the standard tool for administrating a MySQL database. So eventually it'll pop up with this sort of a, a welcome page here. The directory we're really gonna to wanna to work with is this htdocs directory. So htdocs, that's the one that's basically the equivalent of a public HTML folder. So we can open up this and there's an index.php file in there. If we just try to navigate to localhost slash we get this. And this here is actually that index.php file. Because remember how if you have a file named index.php, that's going to be the sort of default thing that displays when you navigate to a route. If we delete the index.php file and we do a refresh, we're going to get this sort of blank screen here where there's no folders to show. And so we're getting, you know, pretty standard Apache server type behavior here. And if we drag files in here now, we can access those files over the web server by saying localhost slash whatever. So basically this folder here, htdocs, it's basically mapped to you know this route here, localhost, and we can use it kind of like a public HTML folder. So the other thing we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna, we're gonna wanna check out the PHP MyAdmin administration tool. So go to localhost slash PHP MyAdmin. And this is your standard MySQL database administration tool. Now when we install WordPress, we're gonna to wanna to install it on its own database and we're gonna call it WordPress. So go to new here and then for database name, put in WordPress and say create. And that'll just give us this blank WordPress database. And that's where we're gonna actually install WordPress. 
So now MAMP is ready to go in terms of installing WordPress, and that's the thing we're gonna get next. So you can go to Google and just type in WordPress. And if you scroll down, you'll see wordpress.org here, this link here, download wordpress.org. Go to that one. And if you scroll down here, there should be a download WordPress. So click on this one and it'll download a zip folder here. So we're gonna go to downloads. We'll grab that zip folder. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna paste it into htdocs and I'm gonna unzip it here. When I unzip it here, I'm gonna get this WordPress folder. And you actually install WordPress by accessing this folder in the browser. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to go to localhost slash WordPress to access this folder. And from there, it basically just asks you information about your server setup in terms of usernames and passwords for MySQL to actually get things going. So we're gonna to go to localhost slash WordPress. We're gonna access that directory and WordPress will actually lead us through the installation from there. So we go here and it says, before you get going, you're gonna to have to know your database name, username, password, and host. And so we'll say here, let's go. So the database name is WordPress, that's what it's called. The username with MAMP is root, and the password with MAMP is root. And this is our database username and password, and that's just the standard sort of MAMP configuration that the username is root and the password is root. The database host is localhost because it's on this machine, and table prefix, we're gonna just gonna leave it as WP underscore. Basically, WordPress creates a whole bunch of tables in your database here for the WordPress installation, and you can change the prefix to make it different things. This would be relevant if we wanted to have multiple WordPress installations on a single database. So I'll say submit here. I'll say, all right, you made it through part of it. We'll say run the installation. That does some setup. It creates this WP config file. And then we'll enter a site title. So I'll say like Kevin's web blog. For username, I'm gonna say admin. And for password, I'm gonna say test123. So pretty horrible username and password, but that's what we're gonna go with. And we're gonna say confirm use of weak password. Then I'm gonna say here, kevin.brownie3 at moacollege.ca for the email. And you do have to put that in, otherwise it actually won't work. But this is what we've got here now. And you're gonna use admin and you're gonna use test123 as well. So we're gonna say here, install WordPress. And then it says success. It says your username is this, your password is whatever you chose. So now if we go to log in here, and I type in admin and we type in test123 and I say log in, that's gonna log me into this WordPress backend here. If I were to visit just localhost slash WordPress, that's gonna take me to the front end of the website here where I can actually see the WordPress blog. So we can do things like install plugins. So I can go, go to plugins here, I can say add new, and we could install a plugin and we could activate it. So we should have the ability to do that as well. And it might take a while to install a larger plugin like this, like Jetpack, but it will download the file and then you can just say activate and that'll install that plugin. You can do things like download and install themes too. So if you go to appearance themes and we say here, add new, we could find some theme and we could add that as well. So I could say like, install this theme, it'll install it. We can say activate, it'll activate it. And now our website's gonna look different. So now it looks like this. And we've got our posts here. We could go in and we could add a new post and we could say like test and test and maybe just test that we can do a post. So we could say here like test, test, publish, publish, and then we should see a test post here as well. And those plugins that I installed and the theme that I installed, they're all underneath here. So if you go to WP content and you go to themes, that 2017 plugin or that 2017 theme that we installed, that's where it's found is underneath themes. And if you go back to plugins, that Jetpack plugin we installed, it's found under there. So that's where the, the files actually end up going when you install these things and you activate them and so forth. But that's basically it. That's installing and a little bit of using WordPress using MAMP on a Mac.